So, I have uh, three observations to make this afternoon and uh, also take the liberty of offering three constructive suggestions to the Honorable Railway Minister. So first, the three observations and then the three suggestions. Uh, the first observation is to do with uh, people and human capital. So there's a very interesting statistic available that for every one lakh population of India, there are 257 central government employees. It's a low number, 257 central government employees for every one lakh population of India. Out of those 257 people who work for the central government, 144, that's over 40 percent, are indeed employed by the Indian Railways. Just goes to show how important the Indian Railway human capital is. There are 1,60,000 vacant posts at the moment. And out of these 1,60,000 or 70,000 vacant posts, about 60,000 are related to safety-related posts in class 3 and 4. So my first observation is, and one has noticed that in the last one month there's been a considerable effort to fill up those vacant posts, not only for safety, but for other disciplines as well. So that leads me to my second observation. If anyone wishes to conclude that by filling up all those vacant posts in safety, the safety problem of the Indian Railways will be removed, or for that matter, for by increasing the passenger fares, all the safety problems would have been removed. That could never happen, but one appreciates the importance that the Ministry is giving to this very, very key area of safety, and I think long-term solution, sir, is the problem. So my third observation is regarding the commercial land, railways putting the commercial land to use. So there's a lot of talking which is happening which is distracting, sir. May I request you to uh, help me because it disturbs me when people are talking no, on the left and the back. Thank you, sir. Let's talk, please. Those who talk, talk in a very uh, Thank you, sir. feeble voice, don't talk So for loud. the commercial, exploit, okay, commercial use of land, sir, there the minister has a figure of uh, total through PPP. The figure is 1,26,000 crores expected from revenue. And a large sum of 50,000 crores is expected from modernizing stations. So it's almost one third, uh, the 50,000 out of 1,26,000. And here my fear is the good intentions of the railways of using this and unlocking these uh, assets. Uh, I just hope it doesn't meet speed breakers where other ministries slow things down because then this is going to be a serious dhakka to railway revenue. So these are my three observations. And now I'd move on to make three suggestions. One of which is related to the consumer, the passenger, and the other to do with freight. The passenger, sir, surprisingly, a large number of railway tickets, more than 50%, are booked through the internet. Out of about 6 lakh railway reservations, 3,20,000, more than 50%, are actually booked in the morning, especially between 8 and 9. And even passengers are put through pain, anger, and a lot of difficulty because at 8 or 9 in the morning, it is well nigh impossible for the last few years to get on to that IRCTC website. My humble suggestion, sir, is that it's not some rocket science. All it would need is some investment in the software. I'd humbly suggest that IRCTC could still be the front end of the operation because that's the brand which has been running the site. But the back end of the operation the railways themselves are equipped because they have a speciality, uh, Chris, uh, C-R-I-S, who could actually do this. And if this is being done and upgraded, then rather than make 6 lakh the capacity, I would suggest the capacity goes up to 10 lakh, at least 1 million. So this problem, in by let's say by the end of the year, should be solved in passengers instead of being grouchy in the morning when they are booking tickets. We'd like to see them smiling. Sir, my fifth, my second uh, suggestion, sir, is to do with freight. Now, 
It is a well-known fact that freight, railway freight, is losing a lot of business to road transport. And the primary reason for this happening is that uh, to book, you, you cannot, for example, book a, a railway wagon. You have to book an entire train. So, I mean, that's, that means the tonnage you have to, to, to have is, is huge. So, there are two ways of looking at it. One is, of course, the freight rates went up. But the other uh, creative solution here, uh, one would suggest, is to try and reduce the tonnage booking. And this can be done. Uh, the railways are already doing uh, a, a very interesting thing, like roll on and roll off. I believe there's a pilot project on somewhere. But if a roll on and roll off policy comes on, roll on, roll off policy would basically mean drawing up a situation where the truck could actually be loaded onto a uh, loaded onto the wagon, and then the truck rolls off the wagon. So in that way, instead of the road operators becoming our competitors, they in fact become our partners. And the second one is the road railer concept, where uh, this is another uh, project which could be tried. The road railer concept is where the wagon is actually a pneumatic tire and where, as, as it's a steel wheel. I understand there may be a thought of trying this and piloting this project, and if that happens, well, that, along with the concepts of using mini rakes and using point-to-point -point rakes, but the basic thing is to compete in freight. The railways have to find innovative ways to make that happen. Sir, and my last uh, suggestion slash observation is for the railways to maybe have a year throughout the year like they had in April of 2012. The April 2012 figures, perhaps the best way to compare those figures would be able to look at the figures of April 2011. Now, if you look at the April 2011 figures and compare them to 2012, here's how they look. Punctuality has increased, or rather has improved by 10%. Passenger revenue has improved by 8%. I'm talking about month-on-month -on, -month on comparison. Uh, sundry earnings have, in, have improved by 13%. Freight has improved by a large 23%, but you have to consider because the freight rates were hiked. But overall, this is happening in an overall economic situation which is slow because there are empty, there are empty, yes, I'll finish in the next one minute. There are empty rakes, both open rakes and uh, closed rakes, which are wagons which are still open. And I think the railways need to find innovative ways to try and get ahead of the slow economic downturn. Sir, I end. Uh, the speaker before lunch, just before me, mentioned that the railways perhaps needed a clear vision. Sir, the vision for the railways was in fact provided in the same way an ophthalmic surgeon would provide good eyesight to us. As you know, if you go to an ophthalmic surgeon, they'll tell you your vision. You don't need spectacles because you have a 2020 vision. Uh, between 2009, when uh, the Honourable uh, Railway Minister then was uh, Mamta Banerjee, 2009 May, between 2009 May and 2011 May, halfway through that, the railways came up with a fascinating and an absolutely pointed, strategic, time-bound document which they called Vision 2020. Sir, so in conclusion, I would urge the Honourable Railway Minister to no, yes, stay focused on the Vision 2020 document. Yes which clearly outlines how this very brilliant organization can continue and must continue to be the lifeline of our nation. Thank you, sir. Thank you.